In this video, we're going to answer this question by using an approach called the trial and error method. Now, in a previous video, we answered a question using the ratio method, which basically required us to work out all of the possible uh, line voltages we could get on the secondary side, and then to choose the right one. But using the trial and error method, all that we're doing is we are eliminating some of the least possible uh, configurations of this transformer that we know are probably not going to give us the required secondary side line voltage and focus only on those that have the best chance of working. So we don't need to work out all of the potential line voltages, but we do need to do some thinking so that we can hone down our list of which configurations we think are going to give us the answer that we need. So let's take a look at the question. It tells us that you are given three single phase transformers with uh, 11 to 88 kV rating. So in other words, they've given us the turns ratio, and we'll see why that is in a moment. But at, for the moment, the rating is 11 to 88 kV, and there are tappings on the primary side, very important, these are not on the secondary side, the tappings are on the primary side of minus 10%, 100%, and plus 10%. And they tell us that the supply voltage is 19,052 volts. They want to know, how must the three-phase transformer be connected to obtain an output voltage of 80 kilovolts? And the star point must be brought to earth potential where applicable. So if there is a star point in this transformer configuration, we need to bring that out to earth. Well, let's take a look at the information that we've been given. Three single-phase transformers being connected together to create one three-phase transformer. Uh, we know that this is a step up transformer. Have a look at the ratings, okay? They were given to us always, primary to secondary. So in this case, this transformer steps the voltage up from 11 kilovolts to 88 kilovolts. So it is a step up transformer. The um, voltage ratio we've been given, as I said here, 11 to 88, is the phase voltages. So it's phase voltage primary, to phase voltage secondary. Another way we can write ratios is as a fraction. Phase voltage primary to phase voltage secondary. They tell us that that is the ratio 11 kilovolts to 88 kilovolts. And we know from the transformer equation that that is the same as the turns ratios in the coils. Turns ratio in this case, primary to secondary, primary to secondary. We could, if we wanted to, write this ratio in a slightly simpler form, divide the numerator by 11, we get 1, divide the denominator by 11, we get 8. Okay, so this is the same as the ratio of 1 to 8. They also tell us that the, there are taps on the primary side, minus 10, 100%, and plus 10%, and they tell us that the line voltage on the primary side is 19,052 volts. If we need it, we can write this as 19,0, sorry, let me rather say 19.052 volts. And we are required to find the configuration for this transformer that's going to give us a secondary voltage, a line voltage on the secondary side of 80 kilovolts. And another way of writing that is simply 80,000 volts. Now we know that in all of these kinds of questions, we've got four options. We can either convert, uh, connect our transformer star star or delta delta. We have seen that those are basically the same uh, configurations. They give us exactly the same output voltages. So um, those always, we could just really just collapse that into a single uh, configuration. Uh, we could choose whether to do star star or delta delta. We're gonna get exactly the same result. Or we can do delta star, or we can do star delta. Now, the first step in our trial and error method is to try and figure out which of these are probably going to give us the, uh, the right voltage on the line side, which are gonna get us sort of in the ballpark of where we need to be. We can make some starting assumptions. Have a look at what we want to uh, achieve. They tell us that the line voltage on the primary side is 19,052 volts, but this transformer 
is only rated on the primary side for 11,000 volts. So already we know that the voltage that we are going to be given, the primary voltage that we are going to be given, is quite a lot higher than the primary voltage in the, on the phase that this transformer can actually cope with. These three uh, single phase transformer coils can only deal, they're only rated for 11,000 volts, okay? So that means that the primary side should be connected in star formation. Because in star formation, we know that the phase voltage is going to be the line voltage divided by the square root of three, okay? This is, this is in star, this is in Y. This is delta. In delta, the phase voltage is going to be exactly the same as the line voltage. If we connected the primary side of this transformer in delta, we would probably end up damaging the coil because that means that the coil, each of those three coils, is going to receive a phase voltage of 19,000 volts and they're only rated to handle 11,000 volts. So, our first assumption is probably the primary side is going to be star just to keep the transformer safe and operational because we know that we can divide the line voltage by the square root of three and hopefully that is going to reduce our phase voltage on the primary side enough so that we don't exceed this rating here of 11,000 volts. Have a look at the second piece of information we've been given. The uh, phase voltage on the secondary side that this transformer is rated to give is 88,000 volts. And the line voltage we want on the secondary side is 80,000 volts. So we can make another very important assumption. We can assume that the secondary side should be delta. Uh, or else the secondary line voltage will likely be much higher than the required voltage. If we were to connect it in star, then we would need to take the phase voltage that we get and multiply it by the square root of three. Now remember, the square root of three, square root of three is uh, approximately one comma seven, I think it's one three, but, but let's just work with it's approximately one comma seven. Okay, square root of three. So that means whatever we get out of the phase on the secondary side, we have to multiply by almost two. That's kind of like getting close to doubling. If we get out 88, let's just say, we get out 88 and we connect the uh, secondary in uh, star, we're going to have to multiply that 88 by almost 2. It's going to get us over 100,000. We don't want a voltage over 100,000. We actually want a voltage only of 80,000 volts. So we think, we assume that this transformer needs to be connected as star delta just by looking at the values which we've been given. So let's make that our starting assumption. And let's go with the 100% tapping and see where that gets us. Okay, we've got a turns ratio, secondary to primary, of 88 to 11. I'm going to leave it as 88 to 11. Uh, remember, we could simplify this down to 8 over 1 or even more simply 8. Uh, but I'm leaving it as 88 over 11 just so that you get used to the fact that no matter what the turns ratio is, uh, you can just simply use that exact ratio in your calculations. And we've also got that the phase voltage on the secondary side is going to be equal to the phase voltage on the primary side multiplied by the turns ratio, secondary to primary. We saw in a previous video how we got to that equation, so I'm not going to go through that again. So let's plug in the values and see what we get. Okay, we know that the phase voltage on the primary side, if the primary side is connected in star, is going to be equal to the line voltage on the primary side divided by the square root of three. So that's what we've got over there, multiplied by the turns ratio, secondary to primary, secondary to primary. That gives us a phase voltage on the secondary side of 87,997 volts, you know, almost 88,000 volts, uh, very, very close to the rating of that coil. Um, because we've assumed that the secondary side is connected in delta, we know that the line voltage on the secondary side is going to simply be the phase voltage on the secondary side. So the line voltage is this phase voltage on the secondary side, which is equal to 87,997 volts. That's not what we want. That's higher than what we want. It's too high. We need to decrease the secondary voltage. Uh, which means we have to increase the number of primary turns. The tappings, 
are on the primary coil. If we increase the number of turns on the primary coil, we will decrease this voltage. If the tappings were on the secondary coil and we wanted to decrease the voltage, we'd need to decrease the, tap, the, the number of turns on the secondary coil. But because the tappings are on the primary and we want to decrease the voltage, we need to increase the number of turns on the primary coil. So let's have a look at the plus 10% tapping. Uh, in plus 10%. Okay, so the ratio, uh, turns ratio, secondary to primary, uh, because the turns, uh, sorry, the tappings are on the primary coil, it is 88 divided by 11 plus 10% of that 11. Now remember, 10% we can rewrite as 0.1, so 10% of 11 is simply going to be 0.1 times 11, and we need to add that to our 11 because it's the plus. 10% tapping. That gives us a ratio of 7.27273. Now remember this ratio, um, this 88 over 11, uh, actually was a ratio of 8. Now we've got a ratio of less than 8, of 7.27273. So let's use that ratio uh, in place of that value over there and see what happens. Okay, once again, primary still connected in star, so the phase voltage uh, on the secondary side is going to be equal to the phase voltage on the primary side, which is the line voltage on the primary side divided by root 3, but now multiplied by our new turns ratio, secondary to primary, which we've calculated as 7.27273. Uh, you didn't have to do this in two steps. I did it in two steps just to keep this uh, nice and neat, but you can do that calculation and that calculation all in one go if you like. But we now get a phase voltage on the secondary side of 79,997.65. Oh, that's very close to the 80,000 that we need. And if we're connected, connecting the secondary side in delta, well, that means that the line voltage on the secondary is going to be equal to the phase voltage on the secondary, which is equal to 79,997.65. 79, well, that is pretty darn frigging close to 80,000 volts. Why isn't it exactly 80,000? Well, maybe, you know, if we didn't round our ratio off, we would have got even closer to 80,000. But I think, you know, 79,997.65, very, very close to 80,000 volts. So we can see in two relatively simple steps, we've been able to establish how this transformer needs to be connected. We can see that it needed to be connected as a star delta transformer. And uh, we can see that we needed to use the 10% tapping. So the primary side of this transformer is connected in star. Um, A2, B2, C2 are all connected to the same point, And that central uh, point has also been grounded. And in each case, we're using the plus 10% tapping of each of those coils. And the secondary side is connected in delta. Uh, you know, there's coil A, so A2, the end of A is connected to the start of B, the end of B is connected to the start of C, and the end of C is connected back to the start of A. So this is obviously a delta connection. Now, there are a couple of general principles that we can draw out uh, of this question that we can apply to any kind of question like this. Um, where you can cut down on the work that you do in finding how the transformer needs to be connected. The first of those questions to ask yourself is, is the supply voltage equal to or greater than the transformer's primary voltage? So supply voltage, we're obviously looking at um, the line voltage on the primary side, and is that greater or equal to the transformer's primary voltage? In other words, the voltage rating that's been given what rating has been given, uh, and remember the rating will always tell you what the phase voltage on the primary side is. So if the line voltage is greater than the transformer's uh, phase rating, you know you need to decrease that voltage. Uh, and the way to decrease that voltage is to connect it up in star, because remember in star the phase voltage is going to be equal to the line voltage divided by the square root of 3, 
which is uh, going to decrease the line voltage somewhat, almost by half, in fact. So that's the first question to ask yourself. If um, The second question to ask yourself, is the transformer's secondary voltage less than, equal to, or greater than the required secondary voltage? Okay, so once again, if it's uh, less than, you want to decrease it even more. Um, if it's uh, equal to, you probably want something that's more delta configured because then the phase voltage you get out of the transformer is going to be the same as the phase voltage of, uh, on, on the line. Now, if the tappings are on the primary side, using the plus tappings, plus 10%, plus 5%, plus 7%, whatever the, whatever the tappings are, that means the number of turns on the primary is increased and the secondary voltage decreases. But that's only true if your tappings are on the primary side. If your tappings are on the primary side, using the minus tappings, the number of turns on the primary is decreased and the secondary voltage increases. So, if the tappings are on the primary side, the situation reverses. Increasing the tappings decreases the secondary voltage. Decreasing the, sorry, the tappings, decreasing the turns increases the secondary voltage. Obviously, if the tappings are on the secondary side, then if you use the plus tappings, the number of turns on the secondary is increased and the secondary voltage increases. If you use the minus tappings, the number of turns on the secondary is decreased and the secondary voltage decreases. So if we use the primary, if the taps are on the primary side, increase leads to decrease. Decrease leads to increase. If the tappings are on the secondary side, increase leads to increase. Decrease leads to decrease. That is the trial and error message, uh, message, method. Now, if you do a couple of these steps and you're still getting nowhere near to your required voltage, then just double check that you haven't made any mistakes in your calculations. Generally, these questions are going to be structured in such a way that you are going to get, if not exactly the required voltage, very, very close to it.